Okay, I've now got my in-move uh, in pass again, lying flat on his face because it was it was rocking forward and backwards on the support spigot because I put the arms back on and I was doing some arm tests and when he leant forward with the arms um, it was a little bit concerning so that's the base that he's on at the moment what I'm going to do is take that off and glue the arrow like this spigot onto it and then just use these uh, these two nuts as wing nuts so I can take it off rather than having that bolt uh, the part that comes apart, this is going to be actually glued into the base of that to stop that rocking because it's it's moving within there basically and I thought this was going to snap because um, there's an, a, only a tiny bit of movement at the bottom but at the top it was moving about six inches so uh, that was a little bit worrying so he's lying on his face as you can see at the moment not looking too happy. Okay, just to show you where I am with the base that I took off earlier um, this this was moving, just rocking, so the whole top of the robot was moving quite uh, quite considerably. I just originally just had that one bolt through there. So I've put a second bolt in that side, second bolt in that side, and you can see one bolt goes right the way through. I don't know if you can see it on the light there. Uh, and I've filled the top in with arrow light. Oh, there's an update of where I am with the in-move. Um, I had it fully assembled and I was doing some full uh, arm tests uh, with the software which were going really well but I managed then to uh, um, break things. <laughs> I thought I'd show you what I broke. In the, um, I broke the, uh, what is it, the left arm upper joint rotation section. Um, basically, I snapped that off. That's the, the uh, drive gear into two and I've just printed a new one so it's not too disastrous um, it's just a uh, word of warning don't be too aggressive with the uh, uh, the testing I think what happened actually is I was doing some very quick tests between positions and the hands touched as I was going through uh, a couple of maneuvers so it caught and twisted the twisted the arm because uh, this is the this is the rotational bit of the arm so rotating it like that and uh, it was going through a maneuver and, and the, the, the hands caught together and just caught that bit I think I think that's what happened um, but the first thing I noticed was there was a, a servo whining away and no no movement so uh, and uh, as I say that had just snapped off at that point there uh, so I just <laughs> want to show you that so I've reprinted it it's the um, rot, uh, Rotworm V5 part um, if you look on the, if you look on Gail's website, there's some 3D uh, PDFs, which are really good. You can actually see how that goes in. But I just thought I'd show you because I've never taken. Uh, I'll put this bit on camera. So um, this I did ages ago. This was done last year. So uh, that's that's the, the that section basically sits in there and rotates this this motor drives the shaft which sits sorry getting it in the camera that motor drives that shaft which then rotates this bit this is the upper part of the forearm as you can probably make out uh, in there so I've taken it all apart in there would obviously sit the the piston it's in like that so that's the uh, I think it's the way it, that's where it, where it goes um, so that's the upper arm of the bicep basically um, which is fine that's what that's all working as I had it completely assembled tested and uh, been testing it for a couple of days so it's um, I'm really moving on with it except I keep breaking things <coughs> sorry about coughing um, as you can probably see I've been gluing various bits in place it's getting a little bit messy with the glue but I'm not that bothered this, these are the li li little electronic boards I'm putting in uh, that's for the hand um, with just a, a power meter on there so I'm, I've been redoing the power as well but um, I'll show you where this broke So 
so that bit sits in sits in there and then this gearing you can get it in the light if that's coming over in the light you can see the gearing that obviously connects in with the with the gear like so uh, so it's, it's obviously a weak point there because that that is really really thin whereas if you look at the thickness of the uh, the bicep worm drive it's uh, three times the thickness I think there are reinforced versions of this but uh, I think this only took well only took this took seven hours to print uh, which I did last night so I broke it at six o'clock and um, shoved it on printing okay now about uh, 20 minutes of sanding later just so you can see you really want it to be doing that it's just go on any that was the original got to be as loose as possible in there I mean obviously it's not moving up and down and it's not moving side to side it's got no lateral movement so it's 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 locked in but it's it's not catching on anything to get that I've had to just shave off this is these top edges there it still is very slightly actually catching there I'm just going to take that off uh, and make sure this edge here, this leading edge here, isn't catching as well, which again it is very slightly. But I'm getting a little bit into the plastic, so I don't want to go too deep because um, I'll take the, the um, first layer off, so uh, I'll expose you know, the, the grid underneath the plastic, so I don't want to do that. Uh, but it's basically, yeah. Uh, It's going perfectly because the next thing is it's got to line up with the let's get the light right there gonna line up with the gearing um, and you can see that I think yeah you can see that and it and it does so that's that's good yeah that's fine that's just lining up quite nicely um, the reason I think it lines up first, I haven't tried that yet, is because I've just sanded in and smoothed this out, it, the, the, the inner bits of the gearing, as much as possible. So there's just, it is um, as smooth running as you can possibly make it. Spend time on it, it really is. You just want to get all of this totally smoothed in and um, you can see it because it goes clear, but uh, as you say, I'm just getting. I wonder if you can see that. Just getting into the the inner edge of the uh, the um, cross hatching. I've taken off the surface, so this is probably just slightly overscaled if you see what I mean compared with that. But then I think this was printed six months ago, so I suppose uh, and different PLA as well, so uh, and different printer nozzle, <laughs> so. That's probably why that is very, very slightly out, but it, it fits there, so that will then go on there. I'm going to screw that, those back in, the screws back in there, uh, which I'll do in a minute, and then just test it and see how it goes. And there you can see it is. Looking good. Let's get my hand out of the way. So it's very much like the um, the, the lower torso video that I did. Got the same idea going on. Um, if I just reverse that on the server on the pot roller. So that is. Just take it down to zero. Or, off rather should now be able to control that from the uh, easy B yeah that's, that's in control
do want to be careful when you're screwing these in that you don't crack the plastic and that you properly allow enough um, uh, space in there for those screws to go in. Don't over tighten because they'll just turn. Just a, a, a point to make, trying to assemble this is, is uh, quite interesting because this piece butts up against the side of there and only has a small gap on on that side there so that you have to sort of put that in but then you can't get this bit to slot in um, so it's a bit of a catch-22 but it will fit in just takes a bit of wiggling um, and then you can get it all to to lock it it's just taken me a few minutes to remember how I did it the first time once that side's on it all just lock back up together And um, don't glue it because if you if you glue it, you'll never take the thing apart. And if you do shear off in there, you'll never get that base screw out because you can get to that screw, you can get to that screw, and you can get to that. But as I say, there's one sitting right underneath there, the fourth one. So I can get in there. So that is back on. If we reconnect, let's just test the power again. It's just when I'm assembling, I'm just always now plugging in um, before I put the power on just a, a, a small servo. Just in case something dramatic happens and uh, snaps the main. I don't mind what happens to that. So just back to well, D D twenty. <coughs> Sorry. Well, that's that's moving. That's fine. Let's put that at ninety. Now this. We'll start turning, I think. That goes here. Yeah. You can see the arm is now back under control. Working back where we were six o'clock last night. Uh, I'm now going to put the uh, forearm on and continue testing it. Now, just to show you, I've got this on the previous video as well, but I've reinforced uh, this support lug because this bit, as you can just see, cracked on both sides, so it was just going to open up. So these are just um, vinyl washers. Uh, eight mil ones, which I've just had a cut. So you can see that. Get that right way around. I've set the marking on on the cog wheel, the test wheel, to line up with a, a marking on the uh, on the arm. Uh, and when this is totally flush at the top, you can see that. When that is when this. Uh, drive wheel isn't going any further when it's flush there it should all line up that's that's my that's my theory there's a mark i've got a pencil marking on there and i've got a pencil marking just on there and that, as long as those two lines line up like so and that is flush at the top there i won't have to reset the bolt i won't have to reset the the pot on the other, on the other side of this uh, <laughs> but I will have to pick up the bolt. There we go. Right, in. There we are.
Now that arm is now rotating. Fine. And there is, that's as far as I've got with the uh, arm movements.